five years old when I got this teapot. And she is now 30. Oh my goodness, Tiffany. I am getting messed up. But she's 30. So we're going to let that marinate a little bit. And I'm going to get myself all situated here in the chair so I can make my tea. I'm going to have a cute little tea party. And you know, we can't be tea without gloves. So I'm going to put my gloves on so we can have our tea. And see, red is my color. Ooh, it looks kind of cute there. And look, I have to put on my other glove. Because this is a fancy the Mamita tea party interview. So, now what we're going to do is we're going to get my little napkin. Isn't this so cute? And we're going to get ready for my little tea party here. I think it should be just about good here. I'm going to pull it up a little right here. I don't know, serve to the left, to the right. Don't matter. Look at that steam, baby. I don't like a lot of sugar. Let me just do a little bit here. And then we're going to put our lemon. Let's get this interview started. Who are you, D. Mamita, and what does 212 mean to you? Well, D. Mamita is just a girl with a dream. A girl with a dream who's trying to live her dream out. That's all who she is. She um, actually had her dream a long, long time ago. And my parents helped me cultivate the dream and I didn't even know it. And 212, what does 212 mean to me? Well, did you hear that steam? That steam is very important because 211, it's boiling. The water is boiling hot. But 212 creates steam. And that's what I am. I'm taking it to 212 because I plan on living out my dream. Where are you from and what does your name mean? Well, I'm actually from, I was born in Chicago, okay? And I moved to New Jersey when I was five years old. And I really don't know much about Chicago, but been there a couple of times. Nice little windy city. And, but I grew up in New Jersey. And I love Jersey. Jersey is so cool. And I started my business there, as a matter of fact, okay? And my name, Di Mamita, what does that mean? Well, I'm gonna be a grandmother one day. And I talked to my daughter one time and I was like, I don't like Nana. I don't like G Mama. And I definitely don't like grandmother. I don't like grandmother. Don't you look like this? What? No. So what we did is we came up with a little cute name. Well, I used to sing a little bit. I'm not a great singer, but I used to sing a little bit. And guess what? I even got paid for it. Right, John Croce? <laughs> yeah, I got paid for it. They used to call me Diva. So we took the D off of uh, Diva, and we put Mom near it. They was like, no, Mom's too plain. So we said, OK, let's give it a little Spanish flavor. And I know the way it's spelled is not the Spanish way, but hey, D Mamita got her own way. So we put Mamita on it, and that's where I get the name from, D Mamita, and that's what I want my grandkids to call me when I become a grandmother one day. D Mamita, how do you like Houston, Texas? Well, Houston is an amazing city. I love it here. I came here with so much opportunity to embark on, and I am embarking on it. Do you hear me? There's great opportunity here. And do you know what I like about Houston? The thing that I really like about it and that I really love about it is that I am not the only one that's embarking on their dream. There are others just like me. So many people are embarking on their dream. So this is the place to be, to actually embark on your dream. Because in New Jersey, I was embarking on it there, but it's really, really prominent here. So I came here to embark on my dream and to capture Houston. And I'm not only gonna capture Houston, but I'm gonna go back and capture Jersey too, even though I captured part of it. Hey, 
I plan on capturing the world. That's the way I do it. See, my is not afraid. She's ready. Let's get it. When did you know you wanted to start your own business? Okay. That's a great question. I knew that I wanted to start my own business when I was like about 10 years old. And I don't know if anybody remembers. Uh, I don't care about telling my age. I'm actually 54 years old. And when I was 10, McDonald's used to hold these um, carnivals. They used to say, okay, they give you the opportunity to raise money with carnivals for muscular dystrophy. So I took on the um, task of actually doing a carnival. And when I did this carnival, I knew it was in me. It was just in me to have my own business. So with that being said, I always kept trying and I kept trying and I kept trying since I was like 10 years old. And there were some few setbacks, you know, you know, it was like, okay, I don't know, I, you know, I gotta do this, I gotta do that before I actually start my business or get my business on board. You know, life happens. But now I am ready. I am ready to do this. I mean, to the 100th or 100th billion, billion, trillion power. So I'm ready to go. At what age did you start cooking? Well, I'm really kind of confused about the age. I think I was like about, I think I was like about nine or 10 because my parents used to both, they both of them worked. And when they were working, I had to cook for my brothers and sisters. So at that time, when I turned like nine years old, my mom had me in front of the stove. And some, I didn't even get coaching sometimes, but I would watch her. And as time progressed, um, I, we used to come to the South, because, oh, let me tell you about this, okay? Yes, I'm a Northern girl, but I got a lot of Southern roots. I lived in the North during the wintertime for school year, but I lived in the South in the summertime. So I got the best of both worlds. And how I got my Southern flavor was through my parents, through my grandparents, and specifically, my dad, my mom, and my grandma on my dad's side. I watched them all the time when they were cooking. And let me tell you, it was worth it because Dimamita knows about Southern cooking. I mean, she knows it to the utmost, especially um, in the Louisiana area because that's where my parents are from. My, mo my father's from there and my mother's from Mississippi. So how can I go wrong? I got it going on, both areas and in the North. What do you find easy about cooking? Okay. What I find easy about cooking, what's easy about it is that when I see a recipe or just in my mind, it just comes to me. So I guess you can call it like a natural talent because if I watch it, I see it, or if I have it in my mind, I bring it to life. So I think that's what I find easy about cooking is due towards the fact that I have the natural talent to do it. I don't find it hard to actually do it. Now don't get me wrong, I have come across some recipes that have challenged me. Yes, I have, but I would never let it beat me. I would always go back. And even if I can't get the recipe the way it was originally um, put together, I would give it to you to flavor. What do you find difficult about cooking? What I find difficult about cooking, I'll tell you what I found difficult about it. It's not the cooking part. It's the part when I cook it and I serve it. The difficult part is to move away from the customers or my family or my friends and not watch them eat it because I get so much joy out of it. I like to see their faces when they're tasting it. I like to see if they go, ooh, or ah, or this is good, or you, you didn't win this one, or whatever. I love to watch it, and sometimes that makes people feel uncomfortable. So that's the difficult part for me, is to remove myself from the people when they're actually eating it, but I can't do it. So if I ever do it to you, please excuse me, because I like to see people enjoy my food. Dimamita, what is your area of expertise in the cooking game? My area of expertise?
expertise of the cooking game is actually to bring people together in regards to cooking. Um, not a lot of people like to cook, but people love to eat. And it brings people together no matter if you don't like to cook or you like to cook. And my expertise in it is to bring everybody together and to share what I actually have in regards to flavors. So my thing in regards to um, bringing people together and having people um, enjoy what they're doing, that's what I find like my expertise is in. I can always do it. I do it in other areas of my life as well, but I do it in cooking and people love to gather and eat great food and even look at it and watch it. So that's what my expertise is. What is your favorite dish? Oh my goodness, anything with seafood in it. I love shrimp, I love crabs, I love fish. I am a shrimp and I am a crab, a shellfish person. I love it. I could eat it every day. That is my favorite thing to cook and rather it be a dish, I can't say because it really doesn't matter. If the dish has that in it, that's my favorite. Do you want me to what do you see your business five years from now? Hmm. Five years from now, here's where I see my business. I see my store opening. Actually, it's already open and it's already going. And I see me as a distributor to the supermarket in the restaurants, if need be. And I see my name on pots and pans. That's what I see. I also see me still teaching because I love to teach. My daughter was my greatest pupil. And if you come out on the Foodie Factors group on Facebook, you will see some of her dishes, which are absolutely amazing, and her presentation is off the hook. But I have a lot of other people in that group as well who does very, very well. I love all of them, and they're all great, and they're all basically home cooks. So I love to display the home cook. And their dishes, and some of those dishes that come out there are magazine quality. Magazine. That is why after I release my book for Asian Soul Fusion, I am going to start a magazine. And it's going to be my magazine, Dima Mita, and I might even have the Foodie Factors name involved in it, and I am going to promote all of the people who are in my group who has amazing dishes and cook these wonderful meals for their families, because that's what it's all about. So that's where I see myself in five years. Dima Mita, I want to thank you very much for doing your first interview with WK's Productions and Entertainment. We appreciate it to the highest. Okay, everyone, you can take note of this. When she has her names on her pots, and she has her name in a store near you, you can say that WK Productions and Entertainment interviewed her first. Yes. Thank you, Dana Mita. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And I really enjoyed it. I really did. And now you know a little bit about me. Okay?